Hi friends, how are you? You know the subject of my video today is permaculture. What permaculture is? How are you permaculture? This is a recording. Permaculture is not an exact science because it has to do with interactions. It has to do with uh, optimization of resources. It has to do with adaptation of uh, your efforts and your actions to the particular features the land you may be uh, developing has. Uh, permaculture is also about conservation, about keeping what's there, about retaining the natural attributes of a piece of land as well, of not affecting it, having a very low impact on the land allowing it to remain uh, intact. We try to keep it free of pesticides and do things naturally, grow things naturally and control pests in a natural way. We also try to contribute through our permacultural existence and living to not, you know, becoming engaged in this in destructive uh, behaviors towards the atmosphere towards the soil towards the water or any other of the natural resources that we tend to manipulate in order to to get what we what we want out of a piece of land what we want is sustainability we want simplicity we want to optimize what the land is intrinsically, what it is, not create what we want it to be, which may be very far from, from its natural state, as in the case, for example, of massive urban construction or urban living. You know, it, uh, it tends to really very uh, aggressively transform the land, cover it up, with uh, materials such as cement or pavement, overcrowded, kind of unbalanced development of the land that completely ends up eliminating uh, its natural characteristics and flora, its original landscape. Now, why is permaculture an interactive system? Well, because there are many different things that we do in order to uh, to establish a more meaningful and more dynamic and more intense relationship with the land. Now, one of the things we do is we tend to grow uh, food. We tend to uh, clear other areas in order to inhabit them and walk through them. We tend to uh, generate a certain amount of waste or things that we don't want. For example, weeds that we pull out. And plus, we tend to uh, have a tendency to want space for for living. You know, we want a, a house of a particular size. We uh, consider we have needs for a studio, needs for a for a kitchen, needs for a green greenhouse to perhaps um, do a number of things in it. You know, uh, have a place to do our wash have a place to germinate seeds, have a place to have a composting toilet. You, know, you, can, you can have certain parts of your buildings, certain areas be multi-use areas where you can have different things happening at the same time. For example, part of your kitchen may be a greenhouse, part of your washing room may be a composting toilet and a shower area. It's very useful to remember that we become alchemists and we become seeds and we become um, karma <laughs> creators, you know. Every single choice you make from the moment you walk into a place, how you're going to establish paths, how you will move about, what the ergonomics of it will be, uh, what the interrelation between your garden and your herb garden and your house and your kitchen your toilet area, uh, your composting area, what the dynamics will be. Those are oftentimes personal choices, you know, they have to do with 
what your instincts tell you, but it's also sometimes important to really reflect about it and to, and to consult sources and to research into the work of people who've done it before.